All right, good morning. How's everybody doing today? All right, good morning. How's everybody doing today? Cool. My microphone works apparently. All right, so I want to talk about um, homework two mostly today. I want to go over the details of that, and then I want to go through the actual step-by-step uh, -step process of doing homework two, um, particularly the stuff related to GitLab, so setting up an account, um, linking up your repository, pushing things over, and adding me as a reporter. So mostly that's what we'll be doing today. Um, any questions on stuff before we get started with that? <clears throat> All right, let's talk about homework two. So um, you've probably already read this, right? So um, this is an exercise in, in using GitLab. We're going to use GitLab as the main way that we submit assignments um, in this course, let me bring my chat window over. So, um, so homework two is a practice on that. Okay, it's it's a um, going through the steps that you'll hopefully go through every time that you start and work on a project in this course or any of the other um, CS courses in the sequence. So um, let let's do this directly from. Um, from scratch as we've done before. Um, there's a README on Canvas and it gives us our, our one-time setup commands which are these configuration instructions. So um, I'm going to start with a fresh account um, so I'll use my Goblin King account which I don't use for anything except stuff like this so there's not a whole lot going on in here and there's there's no git information set up in here to begin with so first thing i'm going to do um is is um some one-time initialization all right so um there's these three config commands so git config dash dash global core dot editor vi okay that tells git that when i do a commit message i want to use vi as my editor instead of nano which is the default okay um next thing you're going to want to do is um make a git account and we're going to use gitlab for this course So let's um, let's hop over to GitLab. All right, so I'm going to come over here where it says register. And we'll go through the usual drill. So um, full name, so my name is Goblin. King. Uh, my username is going to be Goblin King, and it will tell you if the name's in use or not, and it's not, which is pretty remarkable. Um, my GitLab, put in, put in a valid email address because it needs to send you um, validation. So, um, this is an account I'll delete after today, um, but I'm just using it for testing purposes. Put in a password, accept the terms of service, confirm you're not a robot, and then say register. All 
All right, I'm going to just check the box that says I'm just me. I'm not going to worry about filling in my role in detail. Um, and I'll say get started. And welcome to GitLab. Okay, so we're almost good to go, but there's the usual message up here saying um, a verification email has been sent to you. So I set up that address to, um, to talk to my phone. And so I've got my email saying, thanks for signing up for GitLab, confirm your account. So I'll go ahead and confirm that. And it takes a few seconds. And there we go. Your email address has been successfully confirmed. So I'm done with that. Um, we're good to go. All right. So now I'm going to come back to the readme instructions. I'm going to do these two configurations git config global username. I'm going to put in my GitLab user ID, the one I just created, which was Goblin King. And then my email address, which was um, git, git test SLS. So um, git config um, global user dot name Goblin King. And then um, Git config user dot email alright so that's that's our one time setup and that's telling my local git repositories information that will be used eventually to sync them up with with the GitLab repositories okay um, so the whole idea is we're going to you know, have our Linux machine. This could be the Linux server. This could be my home Linux box. But I'm going to do code development over here. And there's this cloud-based service, which we call GitLab. And I'm going to, you know, have my local repositories that I create here. And I'm going to push those over to GitLab. And GitLab is going to have a clone of the repositories that I have on my local machine which means I can pull them back from there if something happens and I lose my work. It also means that, um, that I can go to a different machine and I can pull down my repository and now have two machines that both have all of my code on them. It also means that me as the instructor, I can go to GitLab and I can pull down a copy of your repository and load it on my system and then have all your code, have your readme files and so on and I can test your submissions. Yeah, you can just say software developer for the role on GitLab. Um, I don't think they do anything with that information, so I don't even know what the options are. But yeah, software developer is pretty accurate. All right, so um, so we, we've done our, our one-time setup. We're almost done with the one-time stuff. Um, the last piece of the puzzle, though, is authentication. Okay, what we're going to want to do is, you know, continually make changes to our code, push them over to the repository on GitLab. Um, well, we need to somehow tell GitLab that we're allowed to do that because we don't want some other person coming along and making changes to our stuff on GitLab. We want to be the only person who does that. And we don't want to have to type in our username and password every time we push something over. Okay, we want to be able to do this quickly. Git add, git commit, git push. We want to be able to bundle that in a script maybe so that when we were coding and developing and thinking about what we're doing, we don't have to think about Git. We just do it in the background, right? So we definitely don't want to put in, um, don't want to put in um, a lot of extra steps like typing a username and password. Um, can you change your global.username? So, I mean, you can, you can reissue this command as many times as you like. Um, but this ultimately, when you're going to push stuff over, this has to be the username that you're using on GitLab. Um, and I don't know if GitLab lets you change that. I think it does. And, and this is really... Say again? I can confirm that it does. I did it yesterday. Okay, cool. Um, if I do git config-l, it'll show me what my current information is. And, and this is really just a file, a hidden file in my home directory. Um, so, so you can change these, you know, if you make typos or you change your mind and so on. Um, 
that's all fine. All right, so we have to do uh, one more setup step, which is setting up this handshaking so that we can we can push things over to GitLab without having to do too much work. So um, there's a description of how to do that in this README, um, which is about using SSH keygen to make a public-private key pair. There's also information on GitLab for how to do that, and I'm just going to pull this from um, from GitLab itself. So let's go back to our our GitLab login and. So if you put an icon of yourself up, this will be a picture of you, but this is what I look like right now. So I'm just going to click on this, and I'm going to go to Settings. Okay. Click on Settings, and then come over here to SSH Keys. If your window is small, you won't actually see that. You'll see a, a padlock. Um, so make your window big, right? come down to SSH keys it's a little key symbol all right this is where we set up the information that's needed to authenticate that we are who we say we are so SSH authentication with GitLab all right so go to your settings come down here to SSH keys and it'll say this is where you can add an SSH key well before you can add a key you have to generate one all right, so real briefly, what's going on with this? Um, you want to be able to basically send a username and password to GitLab so that it says, okay, I'll let you make changes to the repository, and then other people won't be able to. Um, we never, ever, ever want to send passwords and private information in plain text. Okay, we don't want to just type these characters in and have them go across the network. Um, because the network's not secure, right? Anybody can sniff anything that's going along the network, especially if you're using wireless, right? Someone next to you in a cafe can pick up everything that your computer sends, right? It's not secure. There's no physical security on our, our networks. So you have to make sure that what you're sending is not useful to somebody else. So we, we send encrypted passwords, okay? Well, if I send an encrypted password, how does the other side use it? So, so topic for discrete structures, right? Public-private keys, asymmetric ciphers. So there's a pair of passwords, a public password and a private password. The public password, guess what? It's public. It's known to everybody. This we can ship around over the Internet freely. We don't care who sniffs it. We put this at the bottom of our email messages sometimes. If you use like PGP, for example, um, so this is this is totally accessible public information, but it's paired with a secret password. Okay, here's the deal: if you know the public password, you can find out if I know the private password. But being able to do that does not tell you what the private password is. Okay, but if you know the public password, you can confirm that I know the private password. Okay, this is this is math magic, um, prime numbers and and very large uh, integers. But um, so it's an asymmetric key. There's two pieces to the password: one that's public domain, one that's kept private. Without ever telling you what my private key is, you can still confirm that I know it. Right, because it's uniquely associated, theoretically, with this public key. So I'm going to give this public key to GitLab, and every time I try to push a, a file over, it will ask me a question, and because I know the private key, I can answer that question, and GitLab will know, oh, you know what the private key is, I guess you're Nick Macias, or Goblin King. Um, so we have to put this public key over on GitLab, which means we have to create it first. So, so there's instructions here for doing this. So let's click through where it says generate one. And um, we're going to use the, the key gen command. So this is this is built into Linux. Um, and and the readme that I posted uses RSA. RSA is pretty secure, but but there's belief that um, this other encryption method is more secure, right? I mean, the stuff changes all the time. 
So let's go ahead and generate a key of type ED25519. So I'm just going to copy this up to the comment. And it's just one command. So come over here. Um, SSH key gen, that's the command for generating the pair. Dash T says, what type do I want? Instead of RSA, I'll do ED25519. And then I can put a comment here, and typically we just put in our email address. Um, and I think the comment is mostly just so you can tell what this key goes with. And I'm going to take default entries for everything else. So which file should I save it in? Take the default, okay? Because if you put it somewhere else, you might forget where you put it. Um, and everything is going to assume that it's in this directory. So let's just take that default. Um, you can make this tougher by requiring a passphrase in addition to the public-private key. I'm going to leave that blank. So I'm just going to hit enter for no passphrase. I'll hit enter one more time to confirm that there's no passphrase. I get a cool little piece of ASCII art. And now what's happened is in this directory under my home directory called .ssh, a pair of files have been created. Okay, this is my private key, this is my public key. It's okay to publicize the public key. Okay, but using this, I can answer questions that can only be, so somebody can ask questions that I can answer only by knowing what's in my private key. Okay, so you can use this to authenticate that someone is who they say they are. I can also encrypt information and give it to someone and, and um, well, that's a different matter. Someone can send me information, they can encrypt it using a public key, and only I can decrypt it using a private key. Um, so again, CSE215, we'll dig into the details of, of a public-private key system, RSA in particular, and see how that works. Um, so, so we don't have to worry about that. Um, yeah, ED25519 is also asymmetric, that's correct. Um, asymmetric because there's two, there's two pieces to the password, basically a public part and a private part. All right, so all I have to do is take this, I have to copy it, um, and you want to copy it as a single line. You don't want that, that line feed at the end to be part of it. Let's go back to our GitLab window. We were under settings, SSH key. Let's come in here and let's just paste that. And there's a title for it. I can call it whatever I want, right? I could set an expiration date. I'm not going to worry about that. I'm going to go ahead and add the key. All right. We should be all set. So I'm going to leave this window for now. And I'm going to come back here and let's continue with our README. Um, let's see, so do we need to get one of those? Um, so, so there's nothing you need to get. Just run the ssh-keygen command. Um, and you can do it exactly like this if you want to read from here. Or you can do it like this if you're reading from from what gitlab.com shows you. If you're, if you're not sure, just do this, right? Type RSA, byte size 4096, dash uppercase C, put your email address in there. And then you're left with, with a pair of files, IDRSA and IDRSA.pub, okay? Copy the public one's contents, paste it into GitLab, where it said SSH keys. All right, and then you're basically all set. So that takes care of your authentication. Um, so the next thing is what you have to do one time per project. Okay, so this is this is when you're starting a new project, um, you have to do this. So everything we've done so far, you're done. Okay, unless you change your your email address or your GitLab account or you move to a different machine, you don't have to do any of these things again. So those three git config commands, setting up your account on GitLab, doing the SSH key gen, pasting the key into GitLab under SSH keys, that's all one-time stuff. Okay, we're done with that, we never have to do it again. So now we're doing the stuff that happens per project. 
Okay, so homework two, your goal is to make a new repository called homework 002, make a readme, copy ODP 403, push it over to GitLab, add me as a reporter. So let's do those steps. Okay, and these are the steps that you'll do every time that, that you start a new project. So um, so where am, I, where am I right now? I'm going to go in my home directory. I'm going to make my, that's not what I wanted. I'm going to make my homework 002 directory. I'm going to go into my homework 002 directory. There's nothing in here right now. Okay. So um, get init. That's how I set up an empty repository. All right. And then um, you need to do one time this git remote add origin statement. Okay, this is what's going to link my local repository to a repository on GitLab. So the syntax is git remote add origin git at gitlab.com colon your GitLab username slash the name of your repository dot git. All right, so git remote add origin git at gitlab.com colon goblin king. Slash, I'm going to call my repository homework 002, and I'm going to call it dot git. All right. And that doesn't actually do anything. That just sets up information. Okay, so if we make a mistake on this, we'll find out in a few minutes. All right, so let's make some files. So let's make a readme.md. Um, so what's my readme going to be? Um, so, so I think in the homework I asked you to just tell me what your um, what your name is and what your experience is with Git, if anything. We really just want a file that you can push over. Um, so sample readme file. This is Nick. Um, I like Git a lot. All right, and then I also want you to put ODP four hundred three. In, in this directory. If you didn't do ODP 403, just make a dummy file ODP 403. Um, and we'll just leave it at that. So, so there's there was working code for ODP 403. Just take your first command line argument, multiply by two, and echo that out. All right. And yeah, um, all this stuff that you need, all the stuff that we're doing right now is in that how-to guide on Canvas, the how-to quick start guide, which tells you how to get to the server, tells you some basic Linux commands. There's a section on Git and GitLab also. All right, so, so we're doing our development. We're writing code, we're testing it, we're changing it, and so on and so forth. Here's the three steps you do over and over again. Okay, so um, Git steps. as you're developing your project. All right, so I've, I've modified my code, I've made some changes, I'm ready to, to do the git thing. Three things we do, git add, add the files that you've, that you've changed. I'm just gonna do asterisk because I only have two files in here right now. So I'm gonna add them both. That's the first step. Second step is commit your changes, git commit, okay? And it will tell me in here in the comments I'm about to commit these two files. And you're supposed to add a comment here saying what you're doing. So um, initial check-in, um, sample readme and copy of third ODP. All right, we've done our git add, we've done our git commit. Our local repository is all set. If I say git status, Everything is, is up to date. If I say git log, I can see that I've made a check-in and so on and so forth. My local repository is all set. The last step is let's push our changes over to gitlab.com. And that's one more command, git push origin master. And this is where you find out if you made any typos when you said remote add origin. And you find out if you set up your SSH key correctly. 
So the first time you try this is, is a discovery process. Looks like it worked great. Okay. Um, so it, it gives me some information, no error messages, I'm good to go. Okay. Well, my readme had some typos in here, right? I misspelled sample, um, and I put an uppercase H on this, um, and I'll put my full name in there. Um, all right. So I made some changes. What do I, what do I want to do? Git add readme, git commit. Um, So here the change was I fixed some typos and I added my full name to the README and then git push origin master. And now if I do a git log I can see I've made two check-ins of my code. And let's take a look at ODP 403. So I always want to put my shebang in the top and if I look at this this is not executable, right? So let's make that executable. So that it does what the ODP was supposed to do. Let's check those changes in also. git push origin master and if I do a git log now I can see I've got three things that I've that I've done on my project so far okay all of this is is being done in my local repository but when I say git push origin master it's cloning my repository onto GitLab so let's hop over to GitLab now and let's come down here under projects and let's look at your projects, which is my projects. And I've got one project, which is homework 002. And I can see that, um, you know, my latest version of ODP 403 was committed 42 seconds ago with a comment that said I added a shebang at the top and changed the file to be executable. And the readme was committed a minute ago and I fixed some typos. Okay, it always shows you the contents of the readme file. It just does that because that's what the readme is for, right? But ODP 403, for example, I can click on that and I can see the current version of my code. I can click on history and I can see older versions of it. This was the initial check-in. And if I click on that, I'll see my old version of ODP 403. Which was just a single echo line without the shebang on top. And there's the old version of the README from that check-in, which had the typos in it and just my, my first name. Right? So I have a whole history of, of all the stuff that I've done to my, my repository cloned on GitLab. So let's say I'm... I'm you know, doing some stuff and I say rm-rf star because I thought I was in a junk directory and, and you know, now I go down to my homework 002 and I'm ready to finish up my ODP 403 and it says new file, right? And I'm like, what the heck? And I do an ls and it's not there, right? And, and I start to panic, right? I've, I've deleted all my files. This was, you know, months of work writing these these files and getting them to r run correctly and so on. So let's um, check my git status. Um, well, um, my git repository is still here because when I said rm-rf star, it didn't delete my .git directory, right? That's still intact because it's a hidden file. So, so I'm saved from my carelessness, but, you know, if I was in my home directory up here, um, and I said rm-rf star, everything is gone, right? I still have my git config directory, my git config file, 
but my homework 002 directory is gone along with the git repository that was in there. I've completely lost it. Okay, if this is the night before a project is due, or a big presentation, or the final submission of a grant proposal, um, this is panic time, right? Okay, well, I've been pushing my stuff over to GitLab, right? And I know that, you know, the last changes that I made, I pushed over to GitLab. Um, they're sitting on the repository. I can see them on the website. When I deleted my directory in my, my login on the Linux server, that has nothing to do with GitLab. My project is still there. Okay, so what can I do? Git clone um, git at gitlab.com colon goblin king slash homework 002.git got my files back got my whole history of changes there's my working ODP 403 that still runs there's my readme file all right, so this can seriously save you. And it can save you if your hard drive goes to lunch, right? If you're working on your home system and all of a sudden your system crashes and your hard drive is corrupted, pull your stuff down from GitLab. All right, last piece of this puzzle um, for, um, for the homework, you have to add me as a reporter. Okay, so how do we do that? Um, So go to gitlab.com, right, log in, go to your project, um, and then go to members. All right, so I had to expand my sidebar. Um, so I click on that, scroll down to where it says members, and say invite member. Okay, um, GitLab member or email address. Okay, this is where you type in my GitLab name, which is Nick Macias. Okay, and this is what you should get Nick Macias. Um, exactly like that. Ten letters, no spaces in between. Click on that, choose a role, make me a reporter. Okay, reporter lets me look at your repository, lets me download it, but it doesn't let me make changes to it. So say reporter and then say invite and you're done. So now I can log in as myself. I can make a grading directory and I can say git clone git at gitlab.com colon you're going to send me your user ID and an email address and so I'll use that and you're going to call your repository exactly homework 002.git so I can use that and now I can come in to your to my copy of your repository and I have access to your code. I can read your readme, I can look at your files, I can compile them, I can test them and so on and so forth. Okay. And I can also look at the whole history of, of your progress. So if you say that latest version I submitted was broken, but the one right before worked well, well I can go back to the version right before and I can see what you had, right? Um this is also a really good way if you're if you're looking for help from me, right? Um, sending screenshots of code, sending snippets of code in email, right? In a pinch, that's that's the best you can do. Okay, but you know if you're really deep in a project and and you're stuck, right? And you're trying to get some help on what's going on, 
right? If I can just come into my machine and I can clone your repository down, I can see exactly what you're doing. We can hop on Zoom. You can tell me what you're trying to do. I can run it. I can see some things happening, give you some ideas to think about and so on and so forth. Okay. So punchline of all of this, you really, really, really want to be using Git. Okay. And you want to start day one on a project, make your Git repository, right? Do your Git remote add origin, make a readme file, do a, a Git push origin master, set me up as a reporter, and then you don't have to worry about it. Okay. Set it up once in the beginning and you're done. And now as you develop, just Git add, Git commit, Git push. All right. This also helps you, you know, if, if, um, you're planning to to get up early the day an assignment is due and work on it and something happens and you sleep through your alarm. If you submitted your code the night before and the afternoon before and the day before that and so on, right, and you don't get your last bug fixes in, I still have most of your code accessible and I can grade you based on that. If you don't do anything with Git until, you know, right before the assignment is due, you risk destroying all your work because you did something, you know, that you weren't supposed to do in Git. Um, and, you know, you also risk the possibility that, hey, the global network got, has gone down today um, and I can't submit my code. Well, if you've been submitting it along the way, right, I can still get to it when things come back up. So, so get in the habit of Git and take homework too as, you know, a practice of going through all these steps, but also as an example of what you want to do every time you start a project. Okay, we're going to do homework three starting tomorrow, um, and hopefully as soon as, we, as we've done that, you'll do these steps, make a directory, uh, git remote add origin, make a readme, push it over to GitLab, set me up as a reporter. And then you can just be pushing stuff as you go. All right, questions about that so far? This is one of these things that just has to become a habit, and it, it may not make a lot of sense up front, um, but you start doing it anyway, hopefully with something that's not precious, right? And eventually it, it just becomes second nature, right? But make yourself an account with a project that you don't care about and, and just practice playing around with Git, because um, there's all kinds of things you can do, right? Um, So, for example, we can check out old versions of our code. Um, so here's here's my my current README. If I do a git log, I can see my different versions of my repository. I can say I want to go back to my initial check-in. Well, let's just grab the first few characters of that that ID. And I can say git checkout that. And I've rolled back in time now. If I look at my readme, it's the readme that I had when I first um, did my first um, commit. And my ODP 403 is the first version of ODP 403. Right, and if I go back to this, this last version, Right, there's my ODP, there's my README. Let's see, question, um, is there a step, um, I forgot, after adding the public key and before doing the remote, remote add origin. Um, once you add the public key to GitLab and you do the remote add origin, you should be all set. Anytime you do git push origin master, it should push your repository over. If that's not happening for you, um, try it again. If it's still not happening, catch me an email or pop by office hours. So I have hours today at five as usual. That's usually what I do, and if something's already been added, it doesn't it doesn't have any any downside. Um, the only sort of of uh, downside to doing an asterisk is if you have a lot of like large files that you don't really need on your repository, like you know big image files or movie files or huge executables or something, 
um, they'll go ahead and get added along with everything else. Usually not a problem. So yeah, usually I just do get add star. And if I've only changed one thing, only one thing will get added. So yeah, that's that's usually pretty safe. And you have 10 gig to play with per repository, so generally not a problem other than speed. Um, it doesn't add duplicates, right? So, um, right, so I, I do a git add and I do a git commit, it tells me there's nothing to commit. I'm already in my, my uh, current state. You can also make like a .git ignore file and name files explicitly that you, that you do not want added to your staging area. And that's one way, you know, if you want to do git add star but not have, you know, executable files added, for example, you can put those in a, a .git ignore file. Okay, that's cool. Yeah. Um, the readme file... is a readme.md. Um, MD is short, short for markdown. So, so HTML is a markup language, right, where, where you can add things to your text to um, change the way it appears in certain viewers. Um, same thing with these, these .md files. We can use a simple markdown language. So, um, um, so let me go back to my my uh well i don't know where i am in my checkout um all right so we can we can put tags in here for example three number signs in the front will change us into something that looks like a title um Putting asterisks around things will italicize them, and so on and so forth. Um, so let's let's push that over. as myself. Let me go back to Goblin King. Um, all right, so now I'm back as Goblin King. That other one was me as a grader. Um, so let's add this, um, let's commit, let's push this over, all right, so now if I, if I come back to the server and I go to Goblin King and I look at my projects and I find this homework 002 project. If I look at it in in here, um, you know, this first line sample readme file is, is bold faced and large like a title and a lot got italicized, right? So Markdown is a simple way that you can, you can add uh, formatting to your readme. You can make bulleted lists, you can make sections, you can change font and size and, and uh, things like that. And my file is you know, just plain text. So you can edit it with whatever, um, but but something that understands Markdown, like, um, you know, the GitLab website will show it to you in a nice way. So you can put in, you know, HTML links and stuff like that. So it's a way to embellish your, your readme or other files. All right, so that should be enough to, to get you through homework too. Please do this today, okay? Don't wait till Thursday night, because I'm usually not online Thursday nights. Um, do this today, 
make sure you can go through all the steps, get everything pushed over, add me as a reporter, okay, go to the settings part of your project, um, go under members, put in Nick Macias, invite me as a reporter. Um, and then Friday morning, I will pull down all of these repositories and make sure I can access them. If I cannot access your repository Friday morning, I will send you an email. And I'll tell you, I can't get to your repository, or, you know, I got your repository, but I didn't find a readme file or something like that. Okay? We're not going to stop this until everybody has 100% on homework, too. So, because this is something you have to know how to do for the rest of, of the year, basically. So, um, so do the best shot you can at homework, too. But if it's not right, I will send you feedback, and we'll figure out how to correct it. You'll add me as a reporter or change the name of the repository or something, right? And I'll try again. And we'll keep doing this until I can actually download your repository and see your files. Okay? And then at that point, you've successfully taken your project, put it under Git, pushed it into the cloud. Okay? And made it accessible to me. And then that's what you'll do every project from here on out. At least for 224 and CSE 222 and probably for CSE 223 as well. So this is something we'll be coming back to. And then when you leave Clark, right, this is something you'll do on a job. This is something you'll do at a university. So it's, it's kind of an essential life skill. All right, any other questions? All right, we're out of here. I'll see you in 2.15 if, if you're in that class. Otherwise, I will see you tomorrow. Have a good afternoon. Looks like another nice day outside. All right, bye.